हेलो एवरी वन आई अर्पिता त्रिपाठी वेलकम यू ऑल टू माई चैनल एंड योर वेरी ओन लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म द वर्ल्ड ऑफ केमिस्ट्री टूडे आई एल कंटिन्यू माई डिस्कशन फ्रॉम द लास्ट टॉपिक एटोमिक स्ट्रक्चर दोज हु हैव इन गॉन थ्रू माई लास्ट वीडियो आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट दम टू गो थ्रू इट विच विल बी यूजफुल फॉर दम इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग द चैप्टर इन अ बेटर वे इन माई लास्ट वीडियो आई हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट एटम्स Dalton's atomic theory and its postulates. Today I'll be discussing about the subatomic particles of atoms and discovery of electrons. Here is the structure of helium atom. In the middle you can see the red protons, blue neutrons. These are present inside the nucleus. and electrons are present in the shells outside the nucleus a particle atom consists of three subatomic particles protons neutrons and electrons as seen in the helium atom in the previous slide other particles exist as well inside the atoms which are very small the bohr model shows the three basic subatomic particles in a simple manner most of an atom's mass is in the nucleus which is a small dense area at the center of every atom composed of the nu nucleons contains the protons and neutrons all the positive charge of an atom is contained in the nucleus and originates from the protons because they are positively charged particles neutrons are neutral electrons which are negatively charged are located outside the nucleus hence we can conclude that an atom contains nucleus and electrons inside the nucleus protons and neutrons are present out of them protons is positively charged particles neutrons are neutral and electrons are the negatively charged particles electron is the smallest subatomic particle of an atom and everything around us is made of them in ancient time people thought that atoms were so small that they can't be divided further but the modern day scientists didn't believe this they wanted to know what actually the atoms are made up of and these questions were answered by the scientists like william crookes j j thompson in 1879 an english chemist sir william crookes conducted an experiment to in uh, to investigate electric discharge through gases as because under ordinary conditions gases are poor conductor of electricity so he stored the gases at very low pressure that is about 0.01 to 0.001 mm of mercury and very high voltage that is more than 10000 volt was applied through the gas in order to make the gas a good conductor of electricity this was the setup in his experiment he used the discharge tube which was made up of hard glass that is the pyrex glass as because this type of glass has high resistance to heat and has high dielectric strength which means the maximum electric field that the material can withstand without breaking this apparatus is known as the discharge tube as it is used to study the electrical conduction through gases at low pressure so by this experiment sir william crookes gave proof about the presence of electrons in an atom later in 1897 a british scientist j j thompson was the one who discovered the electron and told the world that atoms are made up of very tiny particles like electrons so let's see how electrons were discovered by j j thompson when this experiment was conducted 
at that time this was already discovered that charges are of two types one is the positive charge and second is the negative charge and it was also known what was the behavior of the charges how the charges behaved in the presence of electric field how they behave in the presence of magnetic field but it was not known at that time that electrons contribute the negative charge but after conducting this experiment it was known and confirmed that the negative charge was due to these electrons so let's see the experiment before that let's know about this experimental setup this is the discharge tube which is connected with a vacuum pump the vacuum pump helps to maintain the low pressure of gas at both the sides two metallic strips are present which are connected with the high voltage battery this is a high voltage battery this is the negative side source and this is the positive side so the metallic strip connected with the negative side battery is the cathode and the metallic strip connected with the positive side of the battery source is the anode then it was observed when the voltage was high current started flowing and it was detected by connecting an emitter which deflected this deflection was continuous which indicated a current flow a continuous current flow but the question arises is how this continuous current existed as this is the open circuit here you can see nothing is connected so the scientists assume that which is quite obvious that something is flowing in this region either it is flowing from cathode towards anode or from anode towards the cathode due to which the current is flowing in the circuit now the turn was to detect whatever was flowing whether it was from cathode to anode or from anode to cathode so to detect this what he did was he perforated or made hole in the cathode and coated this side with a fluorescent material say zinc sulfide his intention was to find if any particle was flowing from anode towards cathode then some part of it must pass through the hole and strike in the coating and should glow but nothing happened like that then he did just the opposite of it he perforated the anode and coated this side of the discharge tube with the fluorescent material and then observed the glow and the electricity flows it glowed because the particles were moving from cathode towards anode and part of it passed through the hole and striked the coating so it was suggested whatever was flowing as it was from cathode not from anode to cathode as it was not visible so it was named as the cathode rays which was later known as 
the electrons. So the rays were known as the cathode rays. Now, after testing the behavior of cathode ray, it was observed that the cathode ray passed through the straight line. But when electric field was provided, it deflected. Suppose, in this, positive plate will be brought and this side, negative plate then we can observe the deflection of cathode rays towards the positive plate. So where this type of deflection will be visible, it will only be visible when this cathode rays will be negatively charged. If it was positively charged, it should have deflected this side, but it was not there. It deflected towards the positive plate so it is negatively charged. In the magnetic field also the behavior of the deflection was same. Then he concluded that the cathode ray, whatever material it contains, it itself is negatively charged. Then Then further, he changed the material of the electrode. But he found that the behavior of cathode ray was same. It means the cathode ray behavior is totally not dependent on the materials. After that, the gas taken was also changed, but the behavior remained as it is. So finally, he concluded that the electrons are the basic constituent of all the atoms. Materials may differ, but the electrons present was same. So this was the experiment which he conducted. So this is how J.J. Thomson discovered electron and it was the first subatomic particle to be discovered. Now let's see the properties of cathode rays. Cathode rays travel in straight lines. When an opaque object is placed on the path of cathode rays, the shadow is cast on the glass wall opposite to the cathode. This shows that cathode rays travel in straight lines. The next is cathode rays consist of negatively charged particles. The rays deflect towards the positive plate when the tube is exposed to an electric field. This is because the negatively charged particles in the cathode rays gets attracted towards the positive plate. Third point is cathode rays are deflected by the magnetic field. When the tube is exposed to a magnetic field, the cathode rays follow a curved path showing that they are deflected by the magnetic field. Cathode rays produce X-rays. Cathode rays travel with a high speed almost equal to the speed of light and hence possesses kinetic energy. When cathode rays are made to fall on a wheel, the wheel starts rotating showing that the rays possess kinetic energy. Now let's see the properties of electrons. 
electrons are the negatively charged particles it is the integral part of atom and all matters the charge of an electron is 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs the charge to mass ratio of electron was found to be 1.78 into 10 to the power 11 coulomb per gram thomson noticed that the value of charge to mass ratio was same for all electrons irrespective of the nature of the gas and the material of the electrodes so i hope up to this you have understood well thanks for watching